Good morning everyone. It is Sunday and we had a late night last night. Basically we've been planning for weeks to go to a local, like there's a local vineyard basically near where we live and I've been before, I went a couple of years ago and we were trying to organise a big thing to go and it just ended up being myself, Ali and um, another, of, like it was our friends that we went to their wedding um, in Italy and we were planning it, we were so looking forward to it, we booked, we paid for our pizzas, because basically what they do is they do pizza nights there in the summer and the, the pizza is cooked in a pizza oven that is mounted on the back of a vintage Defender. <laughs> and so we booked it, we paid for it, we chose our pizzas, all of that kind of stuff. And then this weekend we have had like, not like a sort of your typical storm, but like a storm of winds which has even like worried us when we've been here. We usually get quite strong winds here, but like, wow, it has been another level. Um, actually yesterday there was a wedding going on nearby and all we could think was just, oh my gosh, poor them, because if they've got a marquee, it's gonna be like nuts. And also we went to, um, the, Carrie and I went to the Le Manoir Bastille Day um, celebration and that had a marquee and we were like oh my gosh if this wind changes it's going it's going over but um, instead we decided to have our own pizza party here we started off at the local pub had a couple of bottles of wine and then poodled on home and fired up the pizza oven played board games and it was such a fun evening and I've had, I feel like I've had such a fun weekend and I can definitely feel I've had a fun weekend, but no rest for the wicked. Today we are going for a little poodle around uh, Bista Village. Basically, Ali is on the hunt for some belts. I think we've got belt fever in this house um, because I had another vintage belt arrive and this one is spectacular but also definitely for like winter so this is a vintage Celine belt and um, you can tell by the sort of logo on it can you see that yeah it's got the old beautiful Celine logo on there and this is kind of like a horse bit belt but it's slightly too big for me so this will be for over sort of jumper dresses or even coats and things like that. It is my normal size, but it's just, it's a little bit, a little bit oversized. I've obviously got it over the belt that I'm wearing at the moment and it looks like it fits perfectly, but yes, it arrived and I'm so, so happy with it. I've got one more belt to come, but I think I might, I think I might be getting ripped off. Not ripped off because I think Bestia Collective have really good procedures in place. So at the moment I'll get my money back, no problem but um, it appears that they've been messaging the seller, like you've not notified us that you've sent the item. If you don't send the item by this day, then we will refund um, the buyer's money, which is obviously my money. It's a really, really good process that keeps buyers, keep, that keeps buyers informed and sellers sort of um, keeping them informed because they've got this middleman that's sort of managing the situation, which is actually really, really genius. And um, so basically they've given her or him, whoever it is, another sort of two days until they need to have sent the belt. But I'm really gutted because I've obviously got a few black belts now and a few tan belts. And this was a really beautiful Rouge H belt to go with my vintage bag for autumn winter. Anyway, I'm just going to have a look because last time I picked up the best Laura Piana dress ever. Like hands down the best Laura Piana dress and it has become such a favorite piece of mine to wear and it's almost like painful because it's linen and it's Laura Piana, it needs to be dry cleaned all the time. So my next best thing is my Jasper Conran shirt dress. This is more of a cotton poplin, um, but it's super comfortable because it's got like a stretch to it. I'm gonna take the second belt off because I feel like a weirdo. Yes, so this is today's outfit to head to Vista Village. Just a simple shirt dress, super comfortable. I've got my Thiers fragrance on, because the Amouage one that I wore on Friday was maybe a little bit too strong for me. Maybe just one squirt and that's enough because it's very, very, very like strong. Whereas I prefer a little bit more of a delicate fragrance. Um, I've got a previous Bista Village purchase. This is one of my favorite cardigans. In fact, I'm gonna see if they've got any more of these because 
um, in different colours perhaps because this is such a great classic. I just always carry it with me and it's it's a bit more casual than a blazer. I think if I was wearing a blazer to Vista Village I'd feel a little bit dressed up. Um, however, this is just shirt dress, cardigan and my usual attire. So we are going to jump in the car and head to do a spot of shopping on Sunday. I thought I would just give you a little bit of a view of the outfit from here as well. Uh, shirt dress, I'll link it down below. They have loads of different colours as well, which is really good. They've also got a green stripe one, which I'm kind of, I'm tempted, but I haven't taken the plunge yet because I think that the, the classic white is just really good. So if you liked my Laura Piana one, I know you would have probably wanted it in linen because the way the linen moves on that dress is just spectacular, but this is the next best thing. And this is one that you can wear in autumn, winter as well, because it's the cotton poplin. So it's great for layering under knitwear and things like that. So yes, I've also got my Susan Kaplan vintage earrings on and Emmy London flats and the usual tan accessories. I did try on my black accessories, but Ali said the tan was more summery. So we're gonna go with that. So let's get going. No trip to Vista Village is complete without a stop for a Starbucks. So Ali's just running to get us coffee and he's getting some food, but I'm having my usual small soya latte and I'm so looking forward to this. There's nothing like getting a nice coffee on a Sunday, even if it is Starbucks. I know Starbucks divides the nation and opinions, but I do like a good Starbucks. First up, we have come to Laura Piana and they've been letting me know that quite a lot of you were trying to get hold of my dress and they were like can't you wear something that maybe isn't selling and i'm like that is for your marketing department to facilitate <laughs> so i'm gonna try on some of these ooh, these knitwear pieces and some skirts and see what they look like so one of the first items that i'm wearing is this linen skirt which i think i'll absolutely take because I think with a nice linen shirt, this will look so, so nice. And this is what I love about Laura Piana. They put so much fabric in the skirt. It is gorgeous. And then it's got this little white piping detail. Yeah, really like this. I feel like I could take this one in a slightly larger size, this jacket. But this skirt, she's just come down the stairs with and it's got blue piping details. Super understated. Lots of fabric in the skirt. And I feel like this looks really quite nice. Oh, I really like this. And the final piece that I'm trying on is this brodery style, um, very, very vibrant green dress, but it's a shirt dress. I love it. And it's green. It's a different shade of green as well. This feels kind of like a bit more of like an Amelia Wickstead shade of green. It's quite, quite sort of intense, but I really love the structure on the collar. If I could get this in white, I'd be so happy. Great full skirt. Oh, I'm gonna put everything on hold and sort of make up my mind. I'm gonna try on this dress. It's an eight, but I love how it looks like a vintage dress. So, so gorgeous. Okay, this is it on. I'm just worried that it's maybe a little bit too vintage looking and I look like I've just fallen out of the 1930s. Oh, I don't know, because I really like it. It looks so chic, but I don't know. Just come into Anushka, which is a jewelry brand that I absolutely love and can't see, but I've got these pearls on here. So good. This is my little courgette collector. You got you got your courgette collecting outfit on? Yes. <laughs> Hello my sausages. Hello my sausages. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We have just got back from Vista Village, which was a very successful shop. And we're gonna be doing some pasta, yes. courgettes, probably cheese, you can do soft cheese. Hello, Lamy. Do some food? <laughs> Come up here then. That's how we talk to each other. Anyway, we're gonna do a little unboxing. Yes. I can't be asked to do one for my channel, so we're gonna both do it here on Lydia's. Yeah, well, you have me up. Ooh, I can't get my words up. 
You're helping me out because I'm super tired. What have I got on me? It's a bit of croissant. <laughs> um, so I did have a croissant on the way home, but obviously we had a late night with our friends. In fact, um, Josh messaged Ali to say that Lumbe was like man little, down. Little fragile. Yes. I drank the perfect amount of wine to feel the most amount of satisfaction without the consequence. Yes, yeah, like yeah, that, that's the, the dream balance, isn't it? But also, I, like, one, I've not eaten all day because I wasn't feeling very well, not from being, um, not from drinking, but I just had a bit of a funny tummy. And so I didn't want to eat and go shopping and then be ill when I'm out. So I um, didn't eat anything and now I'm like lagging massively. But, Mark. oh, whenever we see the sausage dogs when we're yeah, out. Yeah, smelly ears. Oh, he needs a bath. <laughs> He really needs a bath because his bottom is like. Oh, I know, yeah. Barkley is the dog that always has the dirty bum. Like Porter never has a dirty bum, but I know Barkley you always has it. I can kiss you, but you can't kiss me. Mm. You want your food? Mm. You want your food? You want your food? Oh my goodness, you want your foodie? <laughs> Little sweetie. Do in a second. Right, so let's yes, go. Yes, Porty, that's exactly what we want. You squeaking. Should we let him in the living room? Yeah. Right, let's get going. Picked up a little something from churches. So this wasn't exactly what I wanted today. I was actually looking for a black belt, but they didn't have any in my size. I really liked the buckle on this because it's very subtle, it's very small and it's gold, and I was looking for a gold buckle. However, this is brown, but it will be useful for the wardrobe. It goes with the trousers, you can't see. It goes with the trousers I'm wearing today, very nicely. So, that was my first pickup, belt from churches. As you can imagine, good quality leather. And he even polished it for me before he uh, sent me away with it. Yeah, so we, we pootled off somewhere else, didn't we? And then he polished it and we went and picked it up. Yeah. So, my first pickup. Very nice, first purchase. Um, I just purchased three things from Laura Piana, and in all honesty, I didn't want to buy all three of them. Um, and there was a really nice skirt that I didn't show you in Chloe because I was so uncomfortable in those change rooms. I had to change change rooms because their curtains are not big enough for the changing room. So you could see, so I pulled it one way and you couldn't see me, but you could see the other end. Yep. And so I went into the other one, it was exactly the same, but luckily that one was like, it wasn't so much that you were coming from the side. So I didn't show you guys what I tried on in Chloe. Of course, but they right. had, really. They had two skirts in there, but I went back to the Laura Piano one because um, I think I'll get a really good amount of wear out of these. So this first one I think is an absolute classic. It's got navy piping, piping detail. I showed it to you when I was in there. Navy piping detail to the waistband and to the pockets. Um, I'll team this with a navy linen shirt and I think that will look so, so nice. But also like a sleeveless linen shirt as well. Um, so I got that one. And then from Charles Turret, I picked myself up this peachy tie. It actually is listed as orange, but I think, what do you think, Liz? Peach or orange? Really? That's yellow to me. Definitely says orange. So the reason why I picked this up is because, not only was it great value, but because it's a nice soft fabric, and this is really important with ties, I found if the tie's quite stiff, you don't get the dimple that I personally like in men's ties. So if I show you what I mean, Oh, I'll brush that a little bit. A four in hand is the only tie you need, in my personal opinion. So this little section here, that little dimple, Poor that tea. is what you want. If you're Italian, you might wear your tie out like this, but that little dimple there is only really achieved by wearing ties that have very soft fabrics. And so I thought this was a great little tie from Charles Tira. Just to let you know what Porty is saying, Porty has had his Chewy Vuitton bag since Christmas. Chewy Vuitton. And the fact that it still has a squeaker in it is a yeah. miracle because 
if anyone has a, a sausage dog out there, you'll know that they have the ability to break every single toy and destroy every single toy, even if you buy them the toys that say indestructible. Love it when you do this, Porter. It's my favourite thing. Okay, so the next skirt. My favourite of the three. Yeah, Ali really liked this one. Um, they have such beautiful silhouette, si silhouettes in that store, mm. and you never see them on the Laura Piana website. Oh, really? Laura Piana website is like, it's such bizarre shapes. Whereas when you go in there, they've got all of these like elegant skirts and like A-line bits. So this is like a, and I've got to be honest, I wouldn't normally go for like that pattern on the bottom, but I thought with a white shirt at the top, that'll look really, really nice. Yeah, I was saying to Liz, it reminds me of a brand called Bode, which is quite a cool brand mm -hmm. that they stock on places like My Teresa and stuff like that. And I'm not sure if they do female stuff, but they definitely do menswear. And that has that kind of vibe to it. I've never heard of it's it. very cool, very cool stuff. Do you have something to show next? Oh yes. I'm probably gonna murder the pronunciation of this. No, you know this one. Ermel de Gildo Zenia. Ermel Gildo Zenia. Next up, yeah. up these from Zenia. <laughs> Yeah, it's easier to say. Designed with respect, low impact dyeing. This garment has been crafted using equipment and processes that consume less water, energy, and chemicals compared to, to traditional methods. The result is the creation of eco sensitive clothing with minimal environmental impact. I picked myself up a pair of green trousers. Now, what I really liked about these trousers were. You see they've got a pleat on the front, which means that they're going to give me a slightly wider leg at the top. And they also have a really nice washed out detail to them. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're picking it up in this light, but they're a very like relaxed kind of cargo pant style as opposed to a smart trouser. But then they also have that silhouette and sort of ironed in line down the front that do create a slightly more formal look. So I feel like they're a nice hybrid trouser. I think you can get away wearing these in a smart environment but also as a casual look so i like that about these um, and they're a really nice color as well i wear a lot of green cream brown and um burnt oranges and stuff so this will work really nicely with my current wardrobe palette and i think that's me done so my final is another skirt i got three skirts but i didn't feel so bad because I got all three of them for less than the price of one of them retail, but um, it is obviously this stuff. But this one, I've seen this um, particular like embroidery style in there for quite a while, but I hadn't seen this skirt. They did actually have a dress of this, which I would have liked, but it didn't. They didn't have my size, um, and so this is just another skirt which I think will work really well with like linen shirts and. Things like that. Well, I think the, the biggest thing, which is what you flagged when we were in there, is this accessorizing. So you can accessorize it with your tan stuff really yeah. nicely, but also because of the detailing of the black on the um, botanical print. Yeah, like Should the sort of, yeah, botanical print kind of thing. We're going to say that you can style that up with, with black, black accessories. Yeah, I think it'll go with like my black bags yeah. and my black shoes and things like that really well as well. So yeah. I think it's actually a really versatile one. Very um, versatile. Then you would have seen at the end that I just showed you some earrings from Anushka. I have been a fan of Anushka for such a long time and I didn't even realise there was a store at this village until last time when we were just leaving and we had to be back really quickly because Alex was going to do my nails. So I didn't really get a chance to have a proper look and then this time I had a look and um, I reluctantly walked away having not got anything, but there was a few different types of earrings that I was really interested in. And they had these one carat diamond studs, which we got their um, Baroque pearls and fitted them onto the studs because obviously I don't have earlobes. And um, the lady that was serving me that was there was amazing. Her name, I think her name was Natalia, but she was amazing. She was like, you've not really got earlobes, so you've got to be quite careful with what you like put in. And so she got a stud and got the Baroque pearl and fitted them together but they were so expensive, the studs, and then they were still so expensive, even with the discount, like not what I was like planning on buying or... or... Christmas is around the corner. Yeah, maybe Mr. Miller Gordon will get me some, some treats. Some Turns treats. how impatient you are. Yeah. 
I need to look online though because she, she did have these flower ones which I really really liked that had the pearls as well so I need to look at those and just be like did I did I want those ones more or did the other ones suit me more yeah. um but yeah anyway we're gonna make some dinner now we're gonna make some courgette pasta I want a um, suit like this pinstripe I'd call that chalk stripe but yeah I've got a suit upstairs like that from Holland Cooper. There is a difference, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe it is. It definitely looks like a chalk stripe. I think a pin and I think a chalk is a thicker, like a chalk line. Yeah. And a pin, pin is yeah. thin. So that's definitely a chalk so, stripe. Anyway, we're gonna make some dinner um, because we want to try and watch a film that is not like the film that I came to home to Ali watching. What's the word I'm looking for? Thought provoking. I know when I just say it was a harrowing but beautifully filmed. And thought provoking because it was film. the first film that you've ever, that we, that we know of that is filmed from the side of the Germans during the Second World War, yes. which we felt obviously horrific and horrendous things happened during that, but it, it sort of humanized them as well. And, it made us realise that, you know, they too had their families and it's it's a, a tragic event in history, but it was just a very interesting side to see. Perspective. Yeah, perspective. Anyway, we need to make some food. So we, I've just got some, as you saw, Ali was recording me because I went down to get some courgettes from the kitchen garden. And because I've not been able to eat properly today, I am cold. It's actually quite miserable as well. I know that there's massive heat waves like elsewhere in the world, but we are quite cold here. And um, so I put my dressing gown on. But I went down and I picked two courgettes. So I'm not throwing the um, Black Beauty courgettes this year. Although I have to be honest, I think I've had, something has happened with my seeds this year. Either I was not paying enough attention when I was labeling things or whatever. But I planted shallots because shallots are a really good um, onion, like from the onion family for us to have because they're small. We don't use huge amounts of onion and we also don't like putting like half an onion back in the uh, fridge because it makes the fridge smell, blah, blah, blah. It's just not ideal. So we like shallots. So I planted shallots, I'm sure. And what I have is not shallots. They look like green onions. Now, I don't know if that's like me labeling them wrong or maybe something to do with the growing process. It's funny because you never really know how things are gonna look until they grow. So I was like, they must be shallots because they're small onions, but they're sort of a bit more, I don't know, they remind me a little bit more of um, like spring onions, but like spring onions that have grown a bit more. But anyway, and then the other thing that has happened is, and I don't know if this is like a pollination thing, maybe I had the cucumelons too close to the, Cucumbers, I don't know, but my cucumber plants are not growing cucumbers, they are growing cucumelons. But I did also grow cucumelons, but these were not cucumelons, but they are cucumelons now. So a little bit of a mix up. And there's also a few things that I'm gonna change next year with my kitchen garden as well, by the way. I think I've, I'm going to admit defeat on the asparagus because we had a grand total of three asparagus this year. And that is a whole bed that I could use for something else. And so I, I think I'm going to take them out. I'm going to speak to Carrie's mum because Carrie's mum's the queen of asparagus. But I've had enough. And I need to go out there at some point this week and have a really good gardening day because I've, usually I would go out this weekend during the day some, at some point to sort of tidy up. Um, but because there's been this storm and it's only just starting to die down now, um, I haven't been able to go, go down there and had to have the proper clear up, so yes. It's been a learning curve this year, and it's been a learning curve, but a thoroughly enjoyable one. Anyway, we're gonna make some dinner. from the very, very beautiful Blenheim Palace. I hope you can hear me because it's really, really windy today. But um, yes, I'm starting the day here and um, we are suited and booted. Well, booted really because I'm with Carol. All right. <laughs> Say 
hi Carol. Hi Linda. <laughs> um, we're on our way to Clementine's on the Lawn which is the temporary, kind of not temporary, it's sort of the pop-up restaurant that is here at the moment um, for afternoon tea because their orangery is currently under a little bit of a renovation so we're gonna head which there. Which does mean that we have to come back when the orangery is done. Yes absolutely. Um, oh gosh very very windy. She's going to catch on yeah, I did say, should I put some shorts on? It's very windy. Actually, it'll probably be easy when I go through here. Um, but we're going for afternoon tea, champagne afternoon tea. So we've both got some lovely attire on. I'm wearing my silk Susanna London uh, dress, which I actually haven't worn in summertime. Oh, it would be fantastic if the uh, auto brightness on this camera would actually work. Because at the moment, I am a mere silhouette of a human. There we go, welcome back. Um, so yes. We've got a taxi here today. We've been kindly invited to experience the new Clementines on the lawn. So we're gonna head there now. It's actually named after Winston Churchill's wife because uh, he proposed to her on the grounds here. So we're gonna head there now. Ooh, shish kebab. Shish kebab. So we have lovely views over the countryside here and we've gone for a glass of the house champagne which looks delicious and we're waiting for our afternoon tea to come which is lovely. How civilised. So Carrie and I came out to the lawn at Blenheim Palace. I don't think this is a thing that they actually offer, but it was so sunny outside at the time that we came out that we thought we'd bring our champagne out and sit on the lawn and enjoy the views of Blenheim Palace. So. And the staff accommodated. Remy yes. Remy was lovely. Remy was amazing. And. Bought us extra bottles. Ex extra glasses. glasses. And now we're gonna head inside and finish off and head home. Perfect. Carol. <laughs> so we've taken a bottle of the Blenheim Champagne for a walk, a walk across the lawn. So we're taking a walk across the lawns of Blenheim Palace and uh, it's so lovely. It's actually been quite quiet here today, which I think is quite nice because sometimes it can be very, very busy. But I think this is one of those days where it's been quite unexpected with the weather and even though it rained a little bit. Linda lucked out. Linda lucked out. I feel like, is that the title of the video? Linda, Linda lucked, lucked out. out. Because, <laughs> honestly, I sent you um, a screenshot about six o'clock this morning, didn't yeah. I? Of the weather report for Blenheim and it was like sunshine, 23 degrees. And then as we were leaving, it was raining, pissed it down. On the way here, it pissed it down. <laughs> and um, no, we've ended up with this, which has been, delightful no so it's cheers. been so lovely no but we've had such a lovely day and I honestly think that this is such a, a wonderful place to come because I think that there's just always something new to see like I've never never been there and looked at Blenheim Palace from this angle and we just got to sit on the lawn and just enjoy a lovely bottle of champagne and but look also I think as English people I'm just gonna this sounds it's not meant in any way patronising. As English people, I think we lose sight of how incredible the history of our country is. And how fortunate we and are. And how fortunate yeah. we are to have such amazing places. We met some incredible and wonderful people that are subscribers of Lids, and they're from all over the world today that came up to say hello. And they've come here, having seen you be here at like Christmas and things like that, and they're in absolute awe of the fact that they're at a palace. Yeah. And we just, as British people, you just yeah. lose sight of the importance of the fact we have these incredible places on our doorstep. And I mean, look at it. Yeah. 
Look at this. This is the golf lawn. Either that or it's a rounders it's pitch. It's definitely not golf lawn. <laughs> oh, not golf lawn, sorry. A, a, a cricket, a cricket Your pitch. husband yeah. would be like, uh. <laughs> No, do you know what? I've talked about golf so much that I now get served these videos on TikTok that are like, um, should we go learn how to play golf? I, I, think, think, that, honestly, I don't I, think we should tell the boys. Yeah. I think we should go learn how to play golf. And then one day when they're like, oh, we're going to play golf together. My partner like, also plays. We, we, we should, should just go join them but and like absolutely time. wipe the floor. Can you imagine if we've we got a better um, handicap than them? Yes, but obviously we'll also drive the buggy with a bottle of champagne at the same time. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, we'll be better than them. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's 110% fact. I love it. It's so rare that you get to see Blenheim Palace like this. I would always say that if you stay till the end when they're just about to close, you really get to see it in all of its glory and there's not many people around but in all honesty I'm quite shocked that it could oh little fezzy running across <laughs> oh little Phil the pheasant <laughs> oh yeah but I feel like you get to see it in like a different kind of light there's always lots of people here but if you stay here to, right till the end you get to enjoy it and I'm so shocked that it closes in the daylight because obviously it's summertime here so everything stays open a lot later and the sun stays up a lot later so you get to see a lot more but you could probably walk around the grounds so I think this is really interesting so what they're doing here is something quite innovative this is, as they have written on here, a groundbreaking conservation project, the first of its kind at a grade one listed World Heritage Site, and all in effort to combat the effects of climate change. We are removing the glass ceiling of our 18th century orangery and replacing it with a timber and slate structure in the spirit of Vanbrugh's original design, restoring the orangery to what we understand it to be in its original form. Wow! So this, they're not even, this, how fascinating is this? They're basically saying, it's not that we're taking it away, we're putting it back to its original form. Yeah. So what they done, yeah. yeah. So what they were doing all that time ago was actually better than what we're doing now. I know, it's ridiculous. How I, fascinating is, is that? Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday and I woke up at four o'clock this morning after a lovely afternoon of afternoon tea with Carrie yesterday. Um, we, I came home, had dinner with Ali, and we actually did something that we've not ever done before. Usually we sort of have like an evening walk around the garden or something like that, but we just sat on the, the step of the terrace together in the sunshine and just sat there with the dogs and it was really, really lovely. But I woke up at four o'clock today. I could not get back to sleep, I don't know why. Um, so I'm up and I'm ready for the day and I have another lovely day planned. I am heading to the Cotswolds today to see one of my, one of my internet friends, someone who's been like, someone that I've spoken to for, gosh, it must be like three years online and never actually met. We did make plans to meet not long ago and I wasn't able to go, but um, today the planets have aligned and I'm heading to her beautiful house. You may follow her on Instagram already. If you don't, she lives in the most stunning, and I mean the most stunning Cotswold home. And it is decorated in such a beautiful, beautiful way. She has some of the most exquisite gardens. I'm hoping today she's going to sort of take me around and show, allow me to show you because I have checked with her and she said that I'm fine to vlog. So um, I always try and do that just to be a little bit like thoughtful of people's privacy, but she said it's absolutely fine. So hopefully I'll get to show you some of her home. Um, I'm wearing one of my dresses from my collection with Karen Millen in the summer. This is my linen cross neck dress. This one is not the backless one and it's more of the midi leg so a bit more practical to wear sort of day to day. My bag today is a little wicker basket bag uh, from Provence. I picked this up when I was there last and it's such a good size. The only thing I wish is that it had a crossbody so that I could whack it over my shoulder because I honestly think that this is the best size. Um, but I've popped some twillies on the handles just to give it a little bit of intrigue and I've got my um, Hermes sandals on as well. Hair is back. 
and I am good to go. Very, very comfortable because the sun is shining today, which is very, very lovely. It means I'm going to get a chance to sit outside and have lunch with Irene in her house, which is going to be lovely. So I'm going to load up the car now and head to the Cotswolds. I've just got all of my bits and pieces to head down to the kitchen garden and pick some flowers for Irene as well so that I'm not going empty-handed. And I have an abundance of sweet peas at the moment. So all good. Sweet peas have been picked. Hopefully they make it to the Cotswolds. I've popped my sweet peas in the little center console. <laughs> they smell so good and they're making my car smell so good. I feel like I need sweet peas always in the car. Who remembers when um, beetles used to have like a little sunflower on the front of the dashboard? Range Rover needs to be doing that with sweet peas, that's for sure. We have come straight down to the chickens. You can hear Irene, she's taking me inside. This is just glorious here, wow. Wait, this is definitely oh, not what my... Tail for chickens. Yeah, so is that one? Yeah, so they're broody. Uh, don't be careful, yes? No, no, you don't. You, you can look. look. Oh, well, yeah, see, they've all gone broody. They all want to be mummies, oh. which means they're just sitting on eggs. And well, they sit on the straw even because we take the eggs away. Yeah. Oh, chicken no. mama. That one will go a bit nicey, probably. No, she's no. more calm. Oh, little Aren't dumpling. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Charles will plop in your car just because it's warm. Got you. Okay. Wow. Oh, yeah. these are your berries. <gasps> and so you keep them all in here. Okay. Yeah. I've got them in the fridge. Oh, wow. We're just exploring Irene's kitchen garden and it's just yeah. incredible. So this is Irene's greenhouse and this was the first Alitex in the Cotswolds. You have to show us around. Oh my gosh, your cucumbers! <gasps> I know only you and I would get so Oh my gosh! gosh. <laughs> so okay. this, that's so funny that you've done it like this because this is the first year that I've strung mine up yeah. like this. So I've actually got to put How more string up. Before? Um, I was just try trying my best to sort of support them um, in whatever oh, way I could. Trying your best. Yeah. Well. <laughs> These are like little gherkins. So we only grow the miniature munch chicken ones because wow. the big ones are like too much and tasteless. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, I've never tasted one of these ones. Oh my gosh, the organisation. I can't actually cope with yeah, the organisation. So Mike is. So I kind of start growing them, and then he starts. Oh, he made me that. That's honestly like that. But that's just like. Yeah. Until I, lockdown. Yeah. This is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> he just put the hooks up. Yeah, yeah. You well, need to show just, Wow, well, I feel like I need to take a Ali the box he needs to make. Okay. Uh, you so heard it here first. Yeah, yeah, the husband's job. I've got women writing to me going, oh my God, I'm going to guilt my husband. <laughs> um, Irene is going back to the kitchen, but this is my loot so far. Little cucumbers, an egg, garlic, courgettes, and we're just going to do some currants. And I've just been inspired to grow chard as well next year. I've never grown it before, but Irene was telling me that this lasts all the way through the winter as well as the Russian kale. So I think next year I'll have to do those as well. I love your pink hydrangeas as well. If we plant any hydrangeas, yeah. so we planted some that colour outside yeah. of our kitchen and they're white this year. <laughs> so everything just What's goes white happening? because of the soil they, of the soil they all go white where, 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 whereas here your soil hasn't turned them white but over here they're all flumpy and white 
but How they funny. different varieties. Yeah, but Unless it's usually they switch the label for you. No, no, because they were they went in that color. That's so. And then the the, the pH of the of the soil changed yeah. the color. That's so strange. Terrible. Irene's showing me yeah. her, her antique napkin yeah, so collection. I've been collecting them for ages. And my point is some of them that I've bought in auction still have the labels never been used. Wow. And because of that, it was a big lesson because I thought, well, I'm going to use everything I have. So you use these now? We just used it at lunch. I didn't realise they were the antique yeah, ones. <laughs> these. these are about 80 years old. But how do you know what makes a good antique napkin? Well, linen. If it's so, okay. Linen. Okay. Well, well, my point is, I use everything I have. Okay. So, you know, like. So you basically, you're of the ethos. You don't save anything for best, which is my favorite. That's ever. my favorite ever. saying. Irene's so just showing us her crockery collection. Am I allowed to see this? Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure with that. Oh no, but then I feel like I'm showing your stuff. But what I'm saying is this is all like old, but we use everything. So see, we just use that. Yes. So where did you get these from? In From Paris. Wow. At an auction. Well, I am just leaving Irene's now and I've had the most spectacular day. A boot full of goods from Irene's kitchen garden, from her chickens. I almost left with two, two rescue chickens, but basically my uh, chicken coop is being painted tomorrow. So then we can get chickens. I think it's probably a bit more responsible to make sure that we've got everything and do it that way. But yeah, so basically I think that speaking to Irene has filled me with a little bit more confidence and calmed my nerves around getting rescue chickens because I obviously really wanted to make sure that we could introduce them seamlessly and nicely and just calmly but I think that we'll still be able to do that um, with rescue chickens however she's just completely won me over she says it's going to be quite a harrowing experience in that they um, often don't have any uh, feathers and it will take them a few months to grow their feathers back and that kind of thing but yeah I'm, I'm totally totally ready and just so excited and also just just the home that she's built there is just fantastic and it was just so lovely oh my gosh I'm just like you know when you've been speaking to someone online for such a long time and we've been saying that we're going to do this and you know that you've got that sort of connection there with them but you don't realise how big that connection is until you actually are in their company and wow just what a day I could have we, we were literally like getting in the car like not even finishing the conversation because we're still like talking like because we could have just talked all all afternoon just absolutely wonderful and we're already planning our next sort of get together I know that Ali 110% will get on like a house on fire with her husband and yeah I mean Ali gets on with everyone as we always know but yeah anyway I'm heading home now I'll show you my loot of um bits and pieces that she gave me which I did not ask for and I feel so bad <laughs> that I'm like leaving with all of this food but she's like no you've got to take it I can't believe I nearly left with two chickens <laughs> just such a funny afternoon but I'm heading home now anyway so um yeah we'll chat we'll catch up when I get home sometimes I have to ask myself what I did right in my life to come home to a shirtless husband with the table laid and what I imagine is a Sunday roast wow Oh my goodness. Honestly, I've hit the jackpot. Oh, wow. Oh, stop it. Barkley, what did we do right in our life? Mm, perfect. <laughs> goosey. I was with some little goosey that sound just like you. I've never wanted anything more. <laughs> in my whole entire life than to try one of your healing babies potatoes please mm -hmm. and giving me those eyes you are a beautiful little boy <laughs> Bucky baby so just to show you my loot from Irene's I honestly I was like you can't give me all of this Especially when I bought you some sweet peas. Um, but this is 
um, a sourdough, which is obviously the bread that I can have, and I very regularly go and pick up sourdoughs. So this is a, and I tested, this is the white one, um, but I tested the seeded sourdough that she had uh, at lunch, which was chef's kiss. And Irene and her husband are very big on coffee and a whole bag of coffee. The moment that I said that Ali loves coffee too, she was like, well, you're, that's it, you're taking a bag of coffee. I was like, I'm not taking a bag of coffee. She was like, you are, you absolutely are. I was like, right, okay, I am. <laughs> and then these are chicken eggs from her hens. They got me one that was still warm. Oh, really? Yeah. Straight out of the back. Yeah. Barbie, you want to tell mummy what you did today? Oh no. Twice. What? Jumps over the rose bed mm. out the front. I came home and he was just wandering up the lane and then so we've got a Fugini. Barkley. I'm ferocious in the wild. I'm ferocious in the wild. Where did you go? Then they gave me a sprig of their red currants from their the vegetable patch. Wine. She's got one of my hairs on it. Then Irene grows the little miniature cucumbers and I think this is what I'm going to do next year because that's what I need you to do, babe. My cucum cucumelons need stringing up on the next bit to the roof because they're like bent over. So some of those and then also some of her golden courgettes. She had just harvested garlic as well. So a real loot of vegetables, which I just... I can't believe. But I'm gonna curl up now because I'm a bit tired. I didn't sleep well last night. I have no idea. Well, actually I did sleep well. I just woke up at four o'clock and couldn't get back to sleep. So I'm gonna chill. Tomorrow I have a very exciting delivery from Sasha, which I will tell you more about in the morning. Basically. Good morning, everyone. We have a busy day at the house. Ken is finishing off the chicken coop and we just have a little piece of our worktop being replaced. Um, what we didn't mention was that it had all been fitted. However, when the taps arrived, we realized the taps were too far back, but luckily super easy fix. So um, we've just taken that section out and we will be slotting it back in. Then the taps can be fitted. Then the hole can be drilled in the sink and we are able to use our trough, which is very, very lovely. Um, I have been starting the day in my greenhouse with a little bit of vine wiring. I would definitely say that this is a huge triumph. Popping my cucumbers or cucumelons as they've turned out to be. Growing up the archway is pure magic. I feel like it's something that you only really get the full effect of when you're in the greenhouse, but you just get this like archway of vines and then Every so often there'll be a beautiful big flower. I absolutely love it. At the moment, I am cutting back the leaves on my tomatoes so that I can push them up, string them up, and just get them a bit more sunlight. So that is my job at the moment. Well, the little writing desk has arrived and wow, it is so perfect. It's like not too big, which I just love. And then I went for this chair. Um, I actually ended up buying another chair as well. It doesn't match, but I'll just pop it somewhere with some books on and probably some flowers. Um, but I need to have an organizer of this room because at the moment it's housing our cushions and loads of other tap, but it's gonna sit there. It will be higher than the window. The windows in our house are very like low because we've got really low ceilings. But for me, I never want it to look too perfect. So this is gonna work really, really well. And I'm gonna shunt the bed over. It, it's just gonna look so good. And it was just so lovely having Sasha here and like connecting and, and just catching up. My hair looks awful today. This clip is not holding my hair in place. So I get like, these bits. 
you can hear Ken finishing off the chicken coop, but she is the most fascinating human ever, Sasha is. So um, if you don't know, she was the fabulous editor behind Liberty London Girl, the original, original UK vlog. And um, she was just a trailblazer, absolute trailblazer, has worked in journalism and fashion and beauty for such a long time and honestly she's just un unbelievable the stories that she has to tell and she brought her beautiful little lettuce with her and um, so the boys were really enjoying spending time with lettuce she's so tiny oh my gosh um i've also had some deliveries which i thought i would open before we get into anything else i need to have a huge organizer of the house but this is what has arrived a brand called the Rufa's granddaughter, which I actually love. Dear Lydia, I hope you don't mind me sending this to your PO box. My name is Keely and I've been following your channel for years. Your channel has been a constant source of inspiration. I really wanted to say a big thank you. I recently launched my slow fashion brand and I know you love heritage brands. And although, although we are new, our stories are old. I hope you enjoy the Pemberley dress as much as I've enjoyed making her. Warmest Keely, the branding is stunning. Our story began with my granddad, a roofer who repaired the roofs of many charming English homes, sharing tales of life from manor house rooftops with beautiful gardens below. These stories inspired a love for quintessential British elegance, perfect for gracing an English garden. Our dresses are designed to accompany a woman through many chapters of life, becoming a timeless classic for years to come. Guided by his advice to always have pride in your work, we are committed to earth conscious creation, slow fashion and crafting our dresses in England, intertwining our products with the stories that have shaped us. Our dresses seamlessly weave sustainability into their fabric. We use eco-friendly materials, biodegradable tags, recycled packaging to minimise our environmental impact. Um, as a thank you, you'll find a matching scrunchie crafted from fabric cut-offs and eco-elastic. With every cut-off repurpose, we ensure that nothing goes to waste. Warmest regards, the roofer's granddaughter. So, said scrunchie, which I'll probably pop in my hair, seeing as my hair is not looking particularly lovely. So this is their Pemberley dress. Oh yes. And the one thing I always look for is fabric in the skirt. In fact, this I'm going to put on instantly because this is obviously the Amazon fast fashion version. So what I was saying in a recent video about, you know, not everyone can afford sustainable brands. There's a lot more costs that go into being sustainable and it is a luxury, unfortunately. It shouldn't be, but it is. And so if this is in your budget, you're able to buy something quite similar and um, enjoy it and keep it in your wardrobe. The important thing is that you keep it in your wardrobe for a long period, long period of time and it isn't just something that you're turning over. Whereas if you're looking for a more sustainable, fashion conscious piece with a lot more fabric in the skirt, like, wow, I actually don't think I've seen a dress with this much fabric in the skirt for such a long time. I'm gonna try this on with you, but first and foremost, I need to um, get my new writing desk all set up. Evidently, I could not wait to try this on. I've not done the um, writing desk just yet because I just couldn't wait. This is spectacular. Oh my goodness, this is my dream dress. Like actual dream dress other than a shirt dress this is my dream dress let me show you so first and foremost it is a heavy heavy irish linen with so much fabric in the skirt pockets but obviously when i was holding it i thought oh my gosh how is this going to stay up well this is like a corset okay yeah this is like a corset and i have no doubt that it will probably sort of give and and get more comfortable it is quite tight at the moment however i'm not complaining i feel snatched in this i also love that it doesn't have the the ruffles that the other dress has like i like that it's a bit cleaner with its lines it feels a bit more traditional but modern less little house on the prairie slightly more modern country i would say um this is spectacular just look at the movement this moves like my Laura Piana linen shirt dress, which quite honestly, oh wow, I'm in love. Wow, gosh, what an amazing brand to have created. I'm just in awe, in absolute awe. I'll link it down below. I don't even know what colors they do. I haven't even checked the website yet, but they've only got like 200 followers on Instagram. I'm in shock. This is the kind of dream brand that I would like, oh, love to own. Just gorgeous. 
Well, there was me thinking it was going to be too tall and it would stick out over the window and it is absolutely perfect. It actually fits underneath the windowsill, which means I can have a little basket down. Oh, this is perfect. Well, hello. You come in to sit with your mummy in her little room. And we've got Lumi here and Barky's coming. This is my absolute dream. Hello. <gasps> to have all of you in here together. What a treat. What a treat. Well, I am sat at my little writing desk. I've had a bit of a style up. I've got some antique books that um, I actually ended up using for a project that I'm working on. I, I ended up finding a lot of really helpful information in here. So these definitely have to go on this desk. The sun has started to come out, which I actually can't believe how lucky we are for that. I've got my laptop here, I've got it plugged in, and I just had one of those overwhelming moments. I've also popped a little geranium on here because I've been, there's certain pictures on Pinterest that I've seen, that I've seen where they've got geraniums and I loved them on the little writing desk. So, little wild botanist candle, I've popped all of my stuff in the drawers. So I've got my calligraphy set, some stamps, uh, my old diaries, colouring book, this is just my own little writing desk. I've got magazines down there. Ken's just come and measured up for the wisteria wallpaper. I need to go tomorrow to get the paint colour that we're going to be painting. The uh, skirtings, woodwork, the, the doors and things like that. I need to go and find the colour that I want. I was going to go French grey but I'm not sure if it's going to work with the wallpaper. So yes, it's all very much a bit of a work in progress in here. Um, I've popped my grandma's quilt on the bed because I just feel like it always warms up a room. But I had one of those overwhelming moments where Lumi was walking across the little courtyard out here and she loves to come through like windows when people are sat at them. Not that they're ever sat at many windows, but I just know that now the sun's out, I'm gonna open up the windows. She's gonna be able to come and go. I'll have the boys that are just snuggling on the floor next to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is just the, the dreamiest place to sit and write. And I'm just very excited. I think on this wall, I'm either gonna do some like sun hats displayed or I'm gonna have one of those wooden pegs where there's like wicker basket bags um, just hung on them. Just because I want to keep it quite interesting in here, but I also want to be able to put things on the walls that maybe I can't put on the walls in my dressing room. Are you sniffing? You having a little sniff? But yes, I just had one of those really like overwhelming moments and just, I don't know, it's like, I, I just always say, I remember that time when I was like, oh, I, I don't know if I'll ever feel those really intense feelings of joy again and and obviously I do now and so I'm so much more grateful for them when I have them because I'm like oh my gosh um and yeah this was just the perfect piece like I honestly I can't believe it and I almost didn't get it because it was already promised to somebody else and I was like oh I really really want that and please don't give it to someone else she's like it's already promised but that person never paid so it was meant to be and I've got my little chair and I can just do bits of work and it's just a, a space that I can sort of retreat to. Obviously I've got my office downstairs but the girls are obviously, they have so much to do when they're in there and what I would like to do is actually, I'm thinking about turning it into a bit of a library but as an office as well so getting all of my books on the bookcases and just having it as an actual sort of library um, and then the girls can obviously work there but if they need me I'm up here although I do need to uh, get a booster down here because the internet is not as good in the spare bedrooms because it's so far away from everything. So yes that is where I'm going to leave things because I have a lot of work to do at this desk now. Um, Ali is away at a stag do when I'm filming this and I have the whole weekend because I have a huge huge project to wrap up and I'm gonna be sat here probably by candlelight well into the evening, but it should be very, very enjoyable. So I'm gonna leave it here. I'll pick up my next vlog probably fairly soon and I will see you in my next vlog, which hopefully I'll have some news for you. So yeah.